So hello guys, we are going to discuss today process costing. This is uh, also a little bit technical topic, but we'll go through everything. So I need your concentration. So what is the process costing first? Actually in this costing, we are also going to calculate the cost of the product. But what is the main point? Let me give you first example, how it is going to work. Then we'll go through the theory also. For example, you are car manufacturing business. You're manufacturing automobiles. And each car, we know it will pass from the different department, right? Maybe you can divide your manufacturing facility into departments. For example, you have a department one, you have a department two, you have a department three. In the first department, maybe you are going to make infrastructure of the car. Understood? Then obviously, once you will make infrastructure of the car, here you will incur the cost of material also. You will incur also the cost of labor. You will also incur the cost of overheads. Please note all these costs will be recorded here. These costs are actual cost. Which cost? Actual. There is no applied overheads, under applied overheads, or over applied overheads. No. In each department, we will calculate actual cost of material, actual cost of the labor, and actual cost of the overhead. For example, in the first department, actual total cost is $1,000. Once what will, once this department will finish its work, this product will pass to the next department. For the next department, let's assume there you are creating some interior uh, within the car. So there we will have opening cost which you got from the last department as how much? 1000 Understood? Because once the car will be transferred from the first department to the second department, so this cost is called transferred out cost for the first department and it will become transferred in cost for the second department, which I'm assuming opening cost. So again, this department here, we will incur some cost of material, some cost of labor, some cost of overhead. For example, we incurred 1000 of material also, 2000 of labor, 1000 of overheads. So total it will become now how much? 6000. Again, this car along with the cost will be processed or will be transferred to the department number three. Again, we will have here what opening cost, for example, which is what? 6000. Again, for example, we are doing painting, paint work, etc. So we will add here again material cost, labor cost, and what? Overhead cost. For example, opening cost are transferred in cost for the third department was 6,000. And we incurred further cost, for example, 5,000. So total will become how much? Total will become 11,000. And after this 11,000, for example, your product is going to complete. Your product is ready. Then what we will do, we will close this account also for the third department and we will transfer these goods to the finished goods. I'll explain entries, don't you worry. We will transfer to the finished goods. And then once you will sell the finished goods, again, you will book two entries, one for the sale, one for the cost of goods. So, understood? So it means here, how you can define the process costing. I just gave you a rough idea. So now let's have a look what are the main points in the process costing. Number one, process costing. Process cost accounting is used to assign cost to inventoryable goods or services. Mainly these are goods. Understood? So here you are going to assign the cost to the inventory. Understood? It is applicable to relatively homogeneous product. Here you are producing homogeneous product. For example, car you are manufacturing, same model you are manufacturing but you are manufacturing at, at what? Mass production level. Mass means at bigger level. Understood? And you are manufacturing on which basis? On continuous basis. For example, you started six cars. It will be ended again. You will start another six cars. Again, it will be ended. Like you are working in a process. It is a continuous process. And what are like, what are the examples? For example, petroleum products, like petrol you are manufacturing on continuous basis, maybe which will go through different, uh, from different departments. Maybe it could be threads, right? Maybe you have seen the textile industries, how they're making threads. 
So first cotton will be injected in one department, then it will move to the second department, then third department like that. Then maybe it, these could be the computer monitors and I gave you examples for automobile industry also. Now guys, here we have the main features of the process costing. What are the main features? Number one, here we have a continuous production. Understood? Second feature is what? The end product is the result of a sequence of process. As you have seen, the car will pass through different departments. It means after the sequence of the processes, the car will be ready. The third point, homogeneous product with identical and standardized features. Like you are making homogeneous product which are identical. For example, you are manufacturing Toyota Corolla. So every, every car will be standardized. The car will be standardized. Nice features. Understood? Then guys, we have a next point. What's the next point? The process, the processing sequence is specific and what? Predetermined. Obviously, you will decide in which department you will start work. Then product will be moved to the second department, then to the third department. So these are already predefined. Understood? Then number four is what? The finished products outputted from one process are used as a raw material for the next process. As I told you, once the product will be shipped from one department to other department, the department which is transferring the goods, okay, is called transferred out cost for them. The department who is receiving the product along with the cost, for them we will use the transferred in cost. And this will continue until obviously, completion of the problem. And then costs are calculated here what? Process-wise. Process-wise means to say department-wise. Now guys, let me quickly guide you here with the help of example. I mean to say, let I'm going to explain first double entries, which mostly will pass because sometimes they might also ask you to tell the entry, okay, which you can pass in the costing system to, to deal with the process costing. So here we have an entries here first, I am assuming we are, for example, we have two departments. One is, for example, assembly department we have. Which department we have? Assembly department. And second department name, we have a second department which is called which department? Finishing department. So we have a second department which is finishing department. So how entries will be passed in each department and our product will move. These are entries you have to remember. Number one, for example, we are sitting in which department in? Assembly department first. So obviously, first of all, even you are manufacturing cars first, you need to acquire what? Raw material. And when you buy the raw material, what entry you pass? Same entries we discussed in job order costing, but only one entry will change. We don't have a under absorption, over absorption, and applied overheads. No. Actual cost will be recorded only. Number one, what we acquired the raw material, what entry we will pass? We will debit raw material and we will credit what? Supplier. Understood? This is a normal entry. And once we will issue the raw material to the assembly department, what entry we will pass? We will debit work in process account for which department? Assembly. Please make sure here for each department, we will create separate work in process account. And into that work in process account, we'll record material labor and overhead cost. It means for assembly department, we will have a separate work in process account. For example, work in process account means say work in process ledger. This is debit side, this is credit side. And this is for which department for assembly department. So we once we issue the raw material, what entry we will pass? Debit, sorry, debit work in process account and credit will go to raw material. It means this material cost will be recorded under which department under assembly department work in process account on debit side. Okay, because raw work in process is debit due to raw material. So we will write on debit side. Then guys, we will incur which cost? We will incur, incur labor cost into assembly department. So whatever labor cost we are incurring, actual cost, you will debit again what? work in process account okay of which department assembly department and we will credit what 
वेजेस पे एंड नंबर फोर फोर एंट्री फोर्थ एंट्री इन टोटल सो नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू रिकॉर्ड विच ओवर हेड्स एक्चुअल ओवर हेड्स दैट विल आल्सो बी रिकॉर्डेड ऑब्वियसली विद इन वर्किंग प्रोसेस ऑफ असेंबली डिपार्टमेंट बट एक्चुअल ओवर हेड ऑफ विच डिपार्टमेंट एक्चुअल ओवर हेड ऑफ असेंबली डिपार्टमेंट असेंबली डिपार्टमेंट फॉर एग्जांपल आई हैव इनकर्ड इंश्योरेंस कॉस्ट फॉर असेंबली इक्विलिटरी डेप्रिसिएशन इट कुड बी इंश्योरेंस पेएबल क्रेडिट इक्विलिटरी डेप्रिसिएशन क्रेडिट इक्विलिटरी डेप्रिसिएशन ऑफ फैक्ट्री प्लांट एंड मशीनरी ऑफ दैट डिपार्टमेंट property taxes of that department whatever overheads you have so you will credit all those overheads and we will debit to what again work in process account of which department assembly department and now let's assume this is your work in process account of assembly and this is your debit side this is your credit side on debit side we will have these costs which cost material used labor cost incurred and actual overhead cost and i am assuming my total cost is how much 6000 of assembly department now what we will do we will transfer the product to the finishing department and we will also transfer the cost to the finishing department what entry we will pass now we are into finishing department now finishing department is receiving car or product along with the cost from assembly department so what entry we will pass because now we are into which department finishing so we will open another work in process account for which department finishing department and we'll debit first work in process of which department finishing department what was the cost 6000 in total under assembly right so we'll debit with 6000 and we'll credit what work in process of assembly department what you realize there in this entry you should realize here work in process of finishing department is opening we open that account and work in process of assembly department is closing we close that account understood okay then we have a second entry the acquisition of raw material obviously because now this is work in process of finishing department so if we have opening cost we got a cost from last department how much 6000 now obviously we will incur again raw material cost but here you should write raw material used not purchased but once you buy the raw material same entry again you will repeat debit raw material credit what supply but this entry will not go to work in process the raw material which we will issue to the finishing department that will go to work in process so let us we issue the raw material to which department to finishing department so you will debit work in process of each department finishing department credit what raw material that's your raw material is 1000 then again you will incur labor cost in terms of direct labor cost you will pass same entry as you have passed in department number 1 so what entry you will pass debit work in process of which department finishing credit wages payable it will also go to work in process here with the name of wages or labor cost then we will incur also actual overheads actual overheads for which department for work in process department so we will debit work in process First, we should credit like insurance payable, cable and taxation, property taxes, whatever, heat and light expense payable, whatever expenses are there, all actual. And with the total, we will debit what work in process department or which department finishing. So it will also come on the debit side with the list of overheads, whatever you have, insurance payable, property taxes payable. So we will debit. So I am assuming my total cost is for work in process, for example, is thirteen thousand. and now product is completed now product is completed so what now it means the product is completed now the goods will be transferred to the finished goods to which goods finished goods so for for now goods i i have assumed my total cost for finishing department is how much 30000 now what you will do now your goods are completed what entry you will pass when finished goods are ready you will debit what finished goods because this new ledger will open now with the total cost of 13000 which includes the cost of assembly department it includes the cost of finishing department and then we'll credit what work in process of which department finishing why finishing because now we are closing finishing department work in process account understood assembly we have already closed 
Now we are closing finishing department working process account. Now once this is the cost of 13,000 and now once the goods will be sold to the customer, for example, we sold to the customer for how much? 20,000. So we will pass two entries, one to record sales and second to record cost for goods. For sale what entry you will pass? Tab and receivables are credit cash with the sales value and sale value I am assuming it is how much? 20,000. And to record the cost of goods sold, we will we'll use the cost of the product. Cost was 13,000. We have booked there also, right? So that cost we will transfer to the cost of goods sold. We'll debit what cost of goods sold account and credit. Finish goods account with the cost value. Understood? So these are the entries for what? Process costing. Now here we have a two nodes. Number one, note. If goods are completed within the year, for example, you started a car or production of cars, specific cars, and it is completed. You don't have any closing work in the process. You don't have any closing work in process. All products are completed. Then process costing is very easy. How you will get the cost of the product? You will pick last department's work in process account. In my example, last department was what? Assembly or finishing? Finishing, the recent one, finishing. We'll take that work in process and we will check what is the total cost into that account. What is the total cost into that account, right? So total, for example, of finishing department, work in process account was how much? 13,000. So we know the cost of the product then. The products are completed. Do you know problem will arise where? where the products are not yet completed by the end of the year. These are called what? Partially completed product. And this is also called, we have here which process? We have goods in closing work in process. We have still production in the process and year is ended. At that time, there is a problem because how to get the cost of those goods which are not yet completed? which are still in the production process. For that, we are going to use one approach, which is called equivalent units of production approach. And this is the main thing from where question will be tested. So here we go. We are going to work with now equivalent units of production approach. Actually, it is one theory which we will use to calculate the value of closing work in process like if your goods are not completed still in the production process so how to get the value or how to allocate the cost to that closing work in process account do you do you remember if you don't remember i'll remind you once we calculate even cost of goods sold under financial accounting we also need values there. Uh, we also need values there uh, for the cost of goods sold calculation. Values for what? Closing work in process and opening work in process. Right or wrong? If you remember, it was there in the cost of goods sold. So I was uh, uh, telling you guys we are going to use uh, theory, this theory which is called equivalent units of production theory. And this theory we will use to calculate the cost of what? Closing work in process. How this theory is going to work? Let me start now. Please focus with me. So first of all, we have the concept which is called equivalent, equivalent units of production. Equivalent units of production. So I'll share this sheet in the group. You can download from me. Just focus what I'm doing. So what is equivalent units of production? So here we have a small example with example I will explain. For example, guys, we have two glass of water. I'm just assuming two glass of water. Okay, for the sake of simplicity. And these two glass of water are 50% filled with the water. 50% filled with the water. So it means how many glass we have? Two. Two glass means I can say two units I have. Assume these are 50% filled. 50% completed, you can say. 
ओके एंड हाउ मच दे आर फिल देयर फिलिंग परसेंटेज इज हाउ मच 50 परसेंटेज फिलिंग परसेंटेज दे आर 50 परसेंट फिल इफ आई विल टेक टू यूनिट्स बिकॉज़ देयर आर टू यूनिट्स एंड इफ आई विल मल्टीप्लाई विद द 50 परसेंट सो दिस विल गिव यू वन वन यूनिट और वन क्लास राइट टू टाइम्स 50 परसेंट विल गिव यू वन क्लास व्हाट आई कैन से आई कैन से एज पर दिस थ्योरी I can say these two fifty percent filled glass are equal to one filled glass. Can I say this or not? This is the idea of equivalent units of production theory. So they are saying if you have, for example, hundred units in closing work in process, where in closing work in process, but if they are let's say forty percent complete, I'll take hundred units multiply by Forty percent. So this will give you how many units? Forty. So I'll assume these hundred units, which are partially completed. These are equals to forty. Forty completed units. This is the theory. And also remember, guys. Also remember when you manufacture the product. So obviously we don't incur only material cost. We incur three costs. We incur cost of material. We incur cost of labor. We incur cost of overheads. Please remember, labor cost and overhead cost is called is called which cost? Conversion cost. Which cost? Once you will add these two costs, labor plus overhead, it is called conversion cost. Understood? Now in your exam question, he might give you. For example, he might give you that we have. Hundred units were in closing work in process, but they are forty percent complete with respect to material. Assume, and they are, for example, sixty percent complete with respect to conversion cost. Now, how you will calculate equivalent units of production for material and equivalent units of production for what conversion cost? So we'll we'll apply this for for me now. We'll write it here. Units. We'll write it here. Column for material. We'll write it here. Column for conversion cost. How many units we have? One hundred units. And what is the percentage completion for material? Forty percent. We'll take hundred times forty percent. This will give you how many units? Forty units. And for conversion cost, we have a percentage completion how much? Sixty percent. I'll take hundred multiply with sixty. It will give you how many units? Sixty units. It means I can say these hundred units. Which were partially completed, so they are equal to forty units, forty completed units with respect to material, and these hundred units, they are equal to sixty completed units with respect to conversion cost. This idea we will use. So it means how you will get, how you will get equivalent units of production. Here I am doing two examples again. Similar kind of example, then we will move forward. So here we go. For example, if we have hundred units partially completed in work in process, okay, but they are only sixty percent completed. Here you can see I didn't say sixty percent with respect to material or sixty percent with respect to conversion cost. So it means we can say overall sixty percent is completed. So what I will do if I want to calculate equivalent units of production, which what I will do I take partially completed units. And I will multiply with what percentage of completion. So how much work in process units? Hundred percent completion is how much? Sixty percent. I'll get what sixty completed units. It means these hundred units which are partially completed, they are equal to sixty completed units. And then I gave you example also. Like for example, some time. Percentage of completion might be given for material separately and for conversion cost separately. For example, here we have another example. We have one thousand units in work in process. How many units? One thousand. So they are eighty percent completed for direct material, and they are sixty percent completed for conversion cost. So how you will calculate equivalent units for material and equivalent units for the conversion cost? Again, we'll make three column. We we'll write it here units. We we'll write it here material. We we'll write it here conversion cost. Units are how much thousand. Material percentage completion is how much eighty percent. I'll take eighty percent of thousand. It will give you eight hundred units. Equivalent units. 
and conversion cost per unit completion is how much? Sixty percent. I'll take thousand units times sixty percent. It will give you six hundred. It means with respect to material, these thousand units are equal to eight hundred completed units. And with respect to conversion cost, these thousand units are equal to six hundred completed units. Understood? I tell you how this theory will work. This was the starting point. Like what is equivalent units? Understood? Equivalent units. How you will get? Units in closing work in process multiplied by percentage of completion. If it is material, you can multiply with material percentage. If it is conversion cost, you can multiply with the conversion cost percentage. Now we have one equation that is very, very important equation because without this equation, you cannot solve process costing questions. Four to five formulas I will tell you here. And these four to five equations should be in your mind all the time while tackling with the process costing questions. Understood? Yes. So I'll explain. You can memorize at home also, no problem, but I'll explain. First, we have a general equation because every other's equation I'll drive from this equation. For example, this is what is the general equation. Let me explain it. For example, I'm assuming we have opening work in process, thousand units. Opening, you know, at the start of the period, we have some units in the production line, which we got from the last year. How many units we have? Thousand. We'll add here what units started during the period. For example, opening, I have thousand units, but during this period, I have started working on 5,000 units. So if I add opening units plus unit started, so this is called what? Available for completion. How much available for completion? 6,000 units. How you got available for completion? Opening plus started during the year. So available for completion is how much? 6,000. Now what we'll do, we'll deduct from here, what? Units completed. Units completed are also called what? Units transfer out. For example, out of 6,000, 4,000 units are transferred out, completed. Tell me how many units are in closing work in process? 2,000 units will be in the closing work in process. Why, sir? Because 6,000 was total available. Out of that, 4,000 are transferred, completed. It means 2,000 are still in the working process. Which working process? Closing, not open. Also remember, this equation you will memorize. Can you read equation one, one time? Opening units plus unit started is equal to available for completion minus what unit completed or transfer out is equal to what? Closing working. Now here, one assumption you have to keep in your mind. What is the assumption? Unit, see what I'm highlighting. Unit transfer out. will all We will always assume in your exam CMA, we will always assume this transfer out, which, which are 4,000 units. It includes 1,000 units from opening work in process. Those units are completed. Plus, it will include 3,000 units from those which we have started during the period, plus they are completed during the period. Started and completed during the period. Now here, one more important point to understand. What is the important point? Unit started is different, guys. Started means how much units you have started. Completed is also different. But unit started and completed, this is the third thing. Started means you only started. Completed means you whole transferred out. Started and completed means you what? Those units which you started in the same period, plus you completed in the same period. Those are called started and completed. Can you tell me what is the breakup of unit transfer out? It means unit transfer out. Transfer out will always be equal to opening work in process, plus unit started and completed. This will be equal to transfer out. Understood? Now, now, I'm, I will explain the equation just and just I'm trying to make you, uh, you know, understand about these things. Now I have one more question in your uh, in my mind, for example. 
I am saying that for example, transfer outs are given. Please focus. Transfer units, transfer out units are given 4,000. Started and completed is also given 3,000. Can I work with opening working process? Transfer outs are given 4,000. Started and completed is also given 3,000. Can I work with opening working process? Yes, it will be 1,000. How I can calculate? I will take transfer out minus what? Started and completed 3,000. So I'll get what? Opening working process. Understood? If I'm asking another question, just asking. Otherwise, the questions are written. Don't worry. I'm asking another question. For example, I'm saying that transfer outs are given. Opening working process given. Can you tell me started and completed? How you will do? You will take unit transfer out minus beginning working process. You will get started and completed. So see, in in under in like indirect way, I told you two three equations, right or wrong. But now let's go through all equations. If you want to calculate, for example, closing work in process, which work in process? So you will follow this equation. Take what? Opening work in process plus what? Unit started and minus what? Units transferred out. You will get what? Closing work in process. One thing you got, how to get it? Second equation. For example, now I want to calculate. Now I want to calculate what units completed are transfer out. So there are two equations I can use. Number one, if I will add, if, if, if I will add these two things, which two things? Opening working process plus unit started and completed like 1000 plus 3000, it will be equal to 4000 transfer out, right? Right or wrong? This is the another equation is written here. Opening working process plus unit started and Completed, which were 3000, opening was 1000. So you will get units completed are transfer out. Understood? There is another way. There is another way to get units completed are transfer out. If I will reverse the whole above equation, this equation, this equation, I can also get unit transfer out. Now I'll take opening work in process plus unit started minus what? Closing work in process. Again, I will get units started. Sorry, unit transfer out are okay. units completed. Why I'm telling you all these possibilities? The reason, because in question, you will give you data in different ways. You should know from different angles how I can get or how I can reach to the specific value. Maybe an exam question, he will tell you this data and you need unit transfer out. So you will follow this. Or maybe an exam question, he will tell you this data. You should be aware with the possibility also that you can calculate units transfer out by using this equation as well. Right. Now, for example, you are calculating which one? Okay. Opening working process. The one way is what? I can calculate opening working process this way also. How? First way I'm telling you, because this way is not written in the sheet, but keep in mind. I want to calculate now which working process? Opening. What I will do? I can take units transfer out. Units transfer out. Transfer out units how much? 4,000. Minus what? Started and completed, which is how much? 3000. This will give you what? Opening, working process of how much? 1000. Understood? Like transfer out minus started and completed. You will get what? Opening working process. This is a one way. Second way to get opening working process. I can reverse this equation. This equation. Because I want to find opening now. I can reverse. What I will do? I will take closing work in process or any way you can reverse. It's Here it's written in slightly different way, but theme is the same. If you want to get opening, I can do this way also. I will take closing work in process 2000 units on my calculator. I will add back because I'm going reverse now. I want to calculate opening. I'm going reverse. I will add back this 4000. It will be how much? 2 plus 4, 6000. Okay, I'll deduct because this was positive value. Well, while you go reverse, it will become negative. So 6,000 minus what? 5,000, you will get what? 1,000. This you can work or you can write this way also. Units completed, which are 4,000 plus closing work in process, which is 2,000 minus what? Unit started during period, which is 5,000. You will get opening work in process of how many units? 1,000 units. 
now you i got i hope so you got me what i'm trying to say like this equation can be used to get different values then we have one more equation last equation i'm explaining then i move to the main point question number 4 if you want to calculate unit started and completed these two equations also derived from the main general equation i can do this way also unit transfer out which was how much 4000 in the example minus what opening work in process which was how much 1000 so i will get unit started and completed this is a one way other way look i can calculate unit started and completed this way also how i can take units started during the period i started how many units 5000 and i'll deduct from there which process closing work in process which was how much 2000 again it will give you unit started and completed understood so these equate without these equations you cannot think about the solution of process costing question where these equations will be used? Now I'm going to tell you. These equations are also the part of equivalent production of theory, you can say. Understood? Now, now we are moving to the main idea. I'll explain the format first. Be calm. Just listen to what I'm explaining. And then you can ask me the question. Understood? So guys, there are several ways to solve process costing question. But there are mainly two assumptions on which we will solve process cost first. Number one. So there are two methods to calculate what? Equivalent units of production. EUP shortcut means to say equivalent units of production. So either you can use which method? Weighted average method. Or you can use which method? First in, first out method, try for method. Two methods. Understood? Now I'm reading what's written here. Just these uh, three, four lines. And then I'll tell you application of these three, four lines. Number one, under weighted average method. Weighted average. If you are applying, because in question he will tell you guys that you have to apply weighted average method or you have to apply first in, first out method. He will state clearly. Under weighted average method, what we will assume? This assumption, because it's a theory I'm telling you, right? It's assumption. Under weighted average method, what we'll assume? Focus on screen. We'll assume beginning work in process. Then those units, which we have in beginning work in process, opening work in process, we will treat as if it is started and completed during the current period. What's the assumption? Under weighted, uh, under weighted average method, if you have a beginning work in process, we will assume, by the way, I will not use beginning work in process in my calculation because I will tell you more shortcut way. But theory I'm explaining because there, does, there are several ways to do the calculations. I'll tell you the easiest way. But what we assume? Under weighted average method, that beginning work in, work in process will be we will assume as it is completed in the current period. Understood? Because beginning working process coming from last year, even it was started in the last, but we will assume as it is completed in the current period. And under first in first, first out method. First in first out method, what we will assume? We have to focus only on current year work. Which work? For example, here, I'm just giving example what is current year work I mean to say. Huh? For example, I have opening work in process. What I have? Opening work in process, 100 units. But they are already completed 40%. They are already completed. Tell me this 40% completed in this year or last year? Last year. Because opening work in process is coming from last year. And I told you, we have to focus only on current year. Tell me. If 40% is already completed, how much you will complete in this year? 60%. So this is what it means for us. Percentage of completion will be what? 60% or the 40%. But under, under weighted average method, we will assume as it is completed in this year. So we can take personal completion as 100%. But that is the date I will tell you how to do it. 
Two assumptions I told you, right? So for the first in first out method, what's the assumption? The work done in the current period on units in the beginning working process are included in the calculation only. What you have done in this year. If 40% was completed in the last, it means you have done 60% in this year. If 70% was completed in the last year, it means you have done 30% in this year. It means, remember only one word, under 5-4, we have current year focus. Which focus? Yeah. Current year. What we have done this in this year. Now, it will become easy. Don't worry. So far, you will face difficulty how it's how it will work. But once I will show you format, it will become very easy. Now, guys, here, either you are going to use weighted average method or you are going to use FIFO method. So you have to do three steps if you want to calculate cost of closing work in process. How many steps you have to do? Three. Either you are applying weighted average or five method. Three steps you have to do. Understood? Yeah. Number one, step number one is what? You have to calculate equivalent units of production. For what? Material separately and for what? Conversion cost separately. If you are applying FIFO method, you will use FIFO method approach, current year focus. If you are applying weighted average method, you will follow weighted average approach. I'll tell you how it will work, don't worry. But step number one, just memorize theoretically. I need equivalent units of production for material and for conversion cost. Step number two. I need to get cost for equivalent units. Here I got equivalent units, step one. In step two, I will calculate cost for each equivalent units. Cost. Again, I will calculate cost for material separately and for conversion cost separately. Of course, if you if you are applying FIFO, you will follow FIFO procedure. If you are applying weighted average method, you will follow weighted average procedure in this step also. And step number three. We will calculate the cost for required items. Required items are what for me? Closing working process unit. We'll calculate the cost of that. If you want to calculate cost, you have to do three steps. But in MCQs, maybe we'll ask you only step number one, calculate equivalent units. Or maybe we'll ask you step two, calculate cost for, cost for equivalent units. Or maybe we'll ask you step three, calculate the cost for closing working. Anything you can ask. But practically, if you want to calculate cost for closing working process, you have to do all these, these three steps. But in MCUs, anything even in between he can ask. Understood? What are three steps? Repeat with me. Step number one, equivalent units I want. Units per material per conversion cost. Step two, what I want? Cost per equivalent unit. Cost per equivalent unit. And step three, I can calculate the cost for closing working process. Understood? So now I'm going to explain. Now it is going to be easy. Don't worry. Just I need five minutes. I'll explain five. Oh, I'll do example. I'll explain uh, then weighted average. I'll do example. So we are starting with the weighted average method. Okay. Those three steps I'm going to do under weighted average method. Step number one was what? We have to calculate what? EUP. Equivalent units of production. For what? Material. And for what? Conversion cost. And how you will calculate this format, you will remember. Guys, please remember here, there are two assumptions. There could be three also, but mainly two assumptions are tested in exam. Number one assumption is what? They will ask, what if, what if material is added at beginning of the process it is the first assumption you have to read you have to check the question carefully what which assumption is taking according to that solution will change or second assumption is what what if material is added during is added during the process two words are there one is at beginning of the process Second is what? 
during the process. During the process means even throughout the period. And the formula which I'm going to show you first for weighted average, that is based on this assumption. Which assumption? As material is added during the process. And what changes you will make if material is added at the beginning of the process, I'll tell you after two minutes. First, let me tell you if material is added during the process. So how you will get equivalent units by using weighted average method for material and for conversion cost. Understood? So here we go, guys. So we will make these three columns. Always, step for step number one. First column, I'll make units. Second column, we have to make for material. <clears throat> Third column, we have to make for conversion cost. Units, material, and conversion cost. So guys, and for weighted average method, we always need these two things. If it is not given the question, you need to use above equations, which I told you, to get these two things. These two things, we need units, transfer out, and we need what? Closing, working process. No need to include opening because there are different ways to do it. I'm using this way and every question you can solve by using this way. We need which two units? Units, transfer out, and units, Closing. I told you about equations. If transfer outs are not given, how you can calculate? And if closing is not given, how to calculate? Those equations you will use. Those equations will work. I'm assuming we have a transfer out units how much? 4,000. And we have a closing working process units how much? 2,000. Now, guys, Now, what we will do here, unit transfer out, I want to multiply with the percentage of completion. These are transfer out. Transfer out means the first thing what it is, completed units. How it is completed? Obviously, you have used 100% material and you have used 100% conversion cost. That's why these units are completed. Right or wrong? So that is why for transfer out units always the percentage of completion will be what? 100% for material and 100% for conversion cost. He will not tell you the percentage of completion for transfer of units. No. By default, we will assume these are completed units. So we'll take what percentage? 100 and 100. Now, how I will do? I'll take 4,000 units multiplied by 100% will give you how many units? 4,000. 4,000 units multiplied by 100% will give you how much? 4,000. Got it? Then, then we have which units here? Closing working cost. Which units? Closing. We have 2000 units. And here for material, what you will use? We will always use which percentage? What 60? 60 is the assumed value. Give one percentage. For example, in question, it told you that closing working process, assuming, is 60% completed with respect to the material. So, which percentage is given? 60. It could be given 20% also, 30% also, 80% also, whatever is given. Just put it here for material. And whatever is given for conversion cost, put it here. Understood? I'm assuming these are 60% completed. These are 50% completed with respect to conversion cost. What I'll do? 2000 times 60% will give you 1200. 2000 times 50% will give you how much? Can you repeat format with me? Format is what? For unit transfer, our personal completion for material is 100%. For conversion cost, it is how much? 100%. For closing working process, percentage of completion for material will be given that you should use. And for conversion cost, it will also be given. Right? Now I'm going to add here extra information. This format you will follow if material was material were added during the process. What if material were added at the beginning of the process? But you will make changes here, guys. 
if material is added at the beginning of the process, then this thing, this area you will change only. Other part it will remain, remain the same. This area you will change. What is what it is under material in front of closing working process? If material is added at the beginning of the process, then automatically percentage of completion we will use how much percentage? 100. Why? Because we added all material at the beginning of the process. But I said, if material is added during the process, during, then I'll use here which percentage? Given, whatever is given. If material is added at the beginning of the process, it means 100% material we injected. It means that product is completed 100% with respect to the material. So if material is added at the beginning of the process, then we will use which percentage? 100%. This is the change. Only this percentage will change. Remaining will same. Understood? Okay, so these two nodes are written here. Node 1. Only for which column? Material column. In front of what? I'm saying this area. Only this area. But it's a material column and it, it's in front of closing working process. If examiner told you that material is added during the process, then the percentage of completion will be given percent. If examiner told you material is added at the beginning of the process, then the percentage of completion will be 100% at this point. Understood? Please, you have to memorize it strongly. Yeah? Then guys, now we got equivalent units. How we got? I'll take these 4,000 units for material plus this 1,200 units for material column. So I will add these are called equivalent units for what? Material column. Understood? If I'll take this 4,000 plus this 1,000, it will give you how much? 5,000. So these are 5,000 equivalent units for what? Conversion cost. This is step number one. Understood? Now step number two we are done. Underweighted average method. Under with the num number, step number two is what? We have to calculate cost per equivalent units. And we have to calculate for material separately and for conversion cost. Separately, you should not combine it. No, for material separately, for conversion cost separately. Conversion cost, you know what it includes: labor cost and overhead cost. Both together is called conversion cost. So I want first of all cost per equivalent units for what? For material, this is what cost per equivalent units of production for which material. What I'll do? This is a weighted average. Average cost you have to take. If last year material cost is given, plus this year material cost is given, I'll take both. I'll take opening cost of material, means the last year material cost. Plus what? Material cost incurred during the period, means the current year. So this will give you total material cost divided by what? Equivalent units of production from step number one for material column. For material column, total equivalent units of production was how much? 5,000. 200. So I'm assuming these values, guys. I'm assuming last year material cost was how much? 10,000. This year material cost is how much? 20,000. It's a numerator. Divided by 5,200 units of equivalent units of material column. So I'll get material cost per equivalent unit how much? 5.77 per unit. Same I'll do. Same I'll do for what? Conversion cost. Understood? My like conversion cost, what I will do? I need opening conversion cost. Opening conversion cost means the last year. Last year I need labor cost plus overhead cost. If they have given you separate, separate labor and overhead, add of the last year plus what? Conversion cost of this year, labor and overhead of this year, divided by what? EUP of conversion cost. For example, last year conversion cost is 30,000. This year conversion cost is 40, total cost is 70. Divided by EUP of conversion cost, EU, this we will take from step number one. And it was how much? 
five thousand units. I'll divide it in. Understood? And I'll get what fourteen dollar per unit. Now ready to answer the question? See, step three I'm going to do. For example, I want you guys to calculate value of closing working process. How you will do it? Don't forget step number two answer. Our material cost, what's the answer? 5.77 per unit. And for conversion cost, what's the answer? $14 per unit. I'll go back to step number one. Because there I need that information. I want to calculate what? I want to calculate value for what? Closing working process. What I do? I take these equivalent units of because these are closing working process, equivalent units. And I multiply with the material cost. What was material cost? 5.77. So 1200 multiplied by 5.77. This will give you material cost for closing working process. Understood? Can you multiply? 1200 times 5.77. How much you got? This is material cost for closing working process. Now I want conversion cost for closing working process. I pick these equivalent units because this is under conversion cost. Equivalent units for closing working process. Thousand. Don't take these two thousand. Oh guys. Understood? So we, I'll pick this thousand units and I'll multiply with that fourteen dollar because fourteen was the conver conversion cost per unit. So I'll get how much? 14,000. Now I'm asking question. See how you answer the question. I'm asking what is the material cost for closing working process? So you will say how much? 6924. Now I'm asking what is the conversion cost for closing working process? You will say 14,000. Now I'm seeing different question. I'm saying what is the Total cost. Total cost for closing working process. Now I will add these two values. 6924 plus 14,000. Understood? So this will give you total cost of closing working process. Clear? This is done here, step number three. I am calculating total cost. Total cost is calculated here. Our material we have a equal unit 1200 material cost is how much 5.7 i got this value our conversion cost we have a thousand units equivalent units we have a 14 dollar is a cost per unit i got this value if i will add these two this will give you this will give you what total cost for closing but if he's asking only for material then this will be the answer only for conversion this will be the answer total this will be the answer Done? It's up to you. You have to memorize it, guys. Okay? So I'm going to do one question. Because step one is difficult. Because second step is based on step one. That is also easy. Main thing where you will make mistake, equal units calculation. So how will you get the material thing? He will tell you material cost of last year plus current year. You will just take last year material cost. Plus current year material cost divided by equivalent units of material. Step two. Let me tell you these values. So let me guys just practice one question for you. Quickly, then we will move to the five two. Let me find out the question. Is it this is five two? This is weighted average. So guys, please read this question. It's on your screen. Go through do this question. Uh, so guys, you have read the question. So in the question, you are provided with some certain information and he told you here that material is added at beginning of the process, not during the process. That assumption we will follow now. So here he told you data. We have working process on November 1. It means it's an opening working process, first date. It's 60% complete to the Conversion cost. 
percent completion is also given. Units started during the period how much? 5,000. Units completed and transferred out from beginning inventory how much? 1,000. Units started and completed during the month how much? 3,000. We have work in process on November 30. It's closing work in process. It's 20% complete with respect to the conversion cost. And you have to calculate equivalent units. You have to calculate equivalent units for material. This is one question. We have to calculate equivalent units for what? Conversion cost and the third person. So we are going to do together. Do you remember the format at the beginning of process? I need first of all transfer out units. Which unit? Transfer out units. I told you transfer out how you will calculate if it is not given. I'll take opening work in process plus started and completed. So here opening work in process is given. Even here, here he told you big break up. Opening work in process because units completed from beginning one inventory thousand. And then we have here started and completed how much? 3000. So total transfer out units are how much? 4000. And then second thing we need, which is closing work in process. Closing work in process units are how much? 2000. So how you will solve the question now? You will help me. So we will make a format. It's maybe format is already made. So what we will do here, guys, I will we'll write here first units transfer out, which are how much? 4,000. Then I need what? Closing working process, which is 2,000. It's given in the question, right? Now what? Transfer out will always be 100% for material and 100% for what? Conversion cost. I'll just multiply 4,000 with 100, it will give you 4,000. 4,000 with 100, it will give you 4,000. But closing working process, how many units they have? 2,000. You know, I told you the percentage completion should we use here given or 100? It depends. If material is added during the process, we'll use what? Given. But if material is added at the beginning of process, we'll use what? 100. What's the scenario in my question? Yeah. At beginning, we'll use 100% here. We'll take 2,000 time. 100% will be 2,000. And here we will always use given. The conversion cost, if you remember the format. And conversion cost is given 20% completed. How? It's given here. Here. They told you this is closing work in process. They're telling you 20% complete as to conversion cost. So it means closing work in process is 20% completed with respect to the conversion cost, which is given here. So now I multiply 2000 with 20% will give you 400. So now we will add these values to get final answer, equivalent units. I'll take 4,000 plus 2,000. Equivalent units for material is how much? 6,000. 4,000 plus 400. Equivalent units for conversion is 4,400. It means for material answer is 6,000. And for conversion answer is what? 4,400. Clear? I'll do a little bit long question also. Now let's complete the FIFO method first. It's your now duty to retain this knowledge, please. Retain these formats in your mind. I'll explain. Now we are going to talk about with the FIFO method. Please need concentration. Again, there are two assumptions under FIFO method. Okay, so for material, there are two assumptions. Either material will be added at what? Beginning of process. Or material will be added what? During the process. Okay, now, so again, this format was first initially, which I'm going to explain, it is assumed as material is added during the process, because at the beginning of the process, I'll tell you what changes you will make. But for whenever you are solving FIFO method, so you need three things. In weighted average method, we need two things, transfer out and closing. 
But in FIFO, you 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 will get three things. What opening working process units, units started and completed. These it's not a transfer of it. These are units started and completed. That is what we need. What closing working process. As I told you, there are several ways, but it's easiest way is remember this. Every question you can solve by using these. We need opening, started and completed, and closing. We'll write units, column for material, column for conversion cost. And do you remember I told you what? I told you under FIFO method, we will focus only on guarantee. How much cost you have to get in the guarantee? Understood? So what you will do here? So let's assume I have opening units, thousand. Started and completed, 3,000. Assume. Closing working process, 3,000. So what I'll do for material, for example, I told you opening working process is 60% is completed. 60% is completed. It's coming from which year? Last year. It means how much you will complete in this year? 40. So that's why we'll use this. 100% minus what? Minus given percentage. So you will get remaining which you will complete in this year. 100 is the general minus what? Given. If let's say it is 60% completed, so 100 minus 60, it means 40% I'll complete in this year. Same you will do with the conversion cost. 100 minus given percentage. For example, you told you opening working process is 70% completed with respect to the conversion cost. It means 30% we will complete in this year. We'll take 100 minus given percentage. Simply you are taking remaining percentage in one word. But opening working process, what you are taking? Remaining, remaining percentage. For example, 70% is completed, remaining is 30. 60% is completed, remaining is 30. Understood? Now we'll multiply. We'll multiply this 1000 with 40%. You will get 400. This 1000 with 30%, you will get 300. You multiply with the remaining percentage. Understood? Then what we have here? Unit started and completed. Started and completed, I told you how to get from the above equation. Obviously, these are started plus completed. So obviously, the percentage completion should be what? 100, 100 without any doubt. Because these are started and completed. Understood? Without any doubt, it should be 100, 100 because started and completed. So I'll take 3000 multiplied by 100 percent. It will give you 3000. 3000 multiplied by 100 percent, it will give you 3000. Understood? Then for closing working process, same what we have done under weighted average, same I'll do it here. What I'll use? I'll use given and given percentage. As I already told you, closing working process is 40 percent completed. With respect to material, that's it. It's given. I'll take 2000 times 40 percent, it will give you 800. And he told you closing working process is 30 percent completed with respect to conversion cost given and use. There's no change. I'm using given, given. Dare I also use given, given. Then what I, I'll do, I'll take 2000 times 30 percent, it will give you 600. This format you will follow. A material is added. During the process, what if, what if his material is added at the beginning of process, now these things will change. Other things will remain constant. This will change and this will change. You know, you remember for closing working process, last what we did in weighted average, we said a material is added during the process given, same. A material is added at the beginning of process, we'll use 100% same, we will use it here. Same. If during the process given, 
a material is added at the beginning of process, I'll use 100 percent Same I'll do under FIFO, same I'll use, I'll do under weighted average method. Only here is the problem, this area. If material is added during the process, during I'll use 100 minus given. But if material is added beginning of process, I'll use which percentage? Zero. Why? Because this opening work in process is coming from the last year and material is added at the beginning of process it was added in the last year so this year current year you are not going to do anything that's why it will become zero only these two things will change understood can i ask question for beginning work in process if for material column only this this area if material is if material is added at beginning of process percentage will be Thank zero you. If during the process, 100 minus given and say remaining. And for this, closing working process, if material is added during the process, given, beginning of the process, 100 percent, because we assume this closing working process is left from current year. We started this period, and that's why we injected 100 percent in this year. Understood? So these four nodes are written, what I explained. So you will get equivalent units now. I'll show you notes, you can read also. So we have here 400 plus 3000 plus 800 total is how much? 4200 equivalent units for which column for? Material column. Here we have a 3000, a 300 plus 3000 plus 600 total is how much? 3900 equivalent units for what? Conversion. Understood? Done, guys. I have said this clear, right? I'm showing you on screen those notes also for material. You can go through these notes. It's written for opening working process, two notes, and for closing working process. I just told you. I just told you these things. Understood? Great. Now, it was step number one under five. Step number one under Right, and now we are talking about what? Step number two. Step number two is what? Calculate the cost per EUP for material and for conversion. And under FIFO method, we have only current year focus. So that's the last year cost you will ignore. Simply what you will do, if I want to calculate, calculate cost per EUP for which material, I'll take only material cost for the year only, current year only. But in, you know, in FIFO, we were taking last year also, but under, sorry, under weighted average, we were taking last year also, but in FIFO we'll take only current year. Divide by EUP of material from step number one. I'm assuming current year cost is how much? 20,000. And EUP of material is how much? 4,200 from step number one. So it will, it will give you how much? 4.76 per year. Same I'll do for conversion cost. I need conversion cost, means the labor and overhead cost of this period only, divided by EUP from step number one for conversion cost. For example, conversion cost for this period is how much? Assume 40,000. Exactly, we will tell you guys. 40,000 divided by what? EUP of conversion cost, how much? 3,900 you will get per unit cost. Can you tell me what is material cost? 4.76. What is conversion cost? 10.25. Remember, 4.76, 10.25. Now I'm asking you, tell me what is the value of closing work in process? Go back to step number one. And what I want to calculate? I want to calculate value of closing work in process. This is material column. I'll take these equivalent units, multiply by 4.71. I'll multiply. How much you will get? 38. Zero 08. And for conversion cost, I'll take these equivalent units, 
600 and I'll multiply with 10.25. It was 10.25, how much? 995. 6150. This you will get. If question is asking only what is material cost for closing working process, we will say 3809. If question is asking what is conversion cost for closing working process, we will say 6150. If question is saying what is total cost, I'll add these two values. So this will give you total. Totally is calculated here also. This is for material. This is for conversion. This is total. Understood? Now let's do the question. I'm going to do a question with you guys because it's all about format. Let me do a complete question. One question. There's only equivalent units. We have a one question here on your screen. Here you are going to calculate ending work in process inventory. The question is not easy. It will be a big question. It will be tough also. So please read it carefully. Then we'll apply. So we have a company. A manufacturing uses a process cost system to manufacture dust des uh, density sensors for mining industry. The following information pertains to operations for the month of May. This information is available. What he told you? He told you we have a beginning working process inventory on May 1. This is beginning units. We have started in production during May. These are units started. Completed production during May how much? 92,000. And we have an ending working process how much? 24,000. So then what we have? Beginning inventory was, it's about working process. 60% complete for material, 20% complete for conversion. This is for beginning, opening. Here we have our ending working process information, ending. Ending inventory was 90% complete for material and 40% complete for conversion. He didn't tell you material is added at beginning of process, right? Then we'll assume material is added during the process. Beginning of process, he will specify. Understood? Then we have a cost pertaining to the month of May. These are some costs. These are the beginning inventory cost. Our material, how much? This is the material cost of last period, you can say. Direct labor of last period. This is overhead of last period. Now here what cost incurred during May, current, current period, current period. During May incurred how much you incurred for material how much? 468. For labor you incurred? 182. For overhead you incurred? 391. So this is last, last, this is current data. And we are doing what? Y from it. So what we are calculating? We have to calculate ending working process value y for method. It didn't tell you that material is added at beginnings. It means we'll assume it is during the process. And remember the format. So for y for method, we always need three things. We need opening working process, which is given as units how much? 16,000. Second, we need what? Started and completed is not given. Started is given, completed is given, but started and completed is not given. And then we need closing. Closing is also given how much? 24,000 units. Started and completed, how I can calculate? Started and completed, I told you different formulas. So I can apply this formula also. Units started during the period. This formula was written in equation. It was written in equation. I'll take started unit started during the period minus what? You don't remember that? Huh? Just go back. 
we will ask the question. You don't remember? It's okay. You have to calculate started and completed. Tell me this is started and completed equation on your screen. Either you can apply this, either you can apply this. So we will take, you know, started during a period is given in the question. And closing working process is also given. If I take, I will get started and completed. Let's move there to the question. Started during the period is how much? 100,000. And closing working process how much? 24, I'll deduct 100 minus 24. This will give you started and completed how much? 76,000. Understood? And started and completed, I can calculate another way also. I can take this another formula I told you. I told you by the way there is an equation. I can take units transfer out because you know opening plus started and completed is equal to transfer out, right? If transfer out is known, opening is known, I can calculate started and completed also because transfer out is how much? 92. And opening is how much? 16. Difference will be started and completed 76,000. Both equations will work and you have to work with that. So we got three. And now, guys, we'll work here. Step number one, I'm going to give. Equivalent units for material for conversion cost. We have here units, material cost, conversion cost. We will have opening working process. Opening working process is given 16,000 units. We work with the units started and completed, which is 76,000. We know closing working process straight away is given it is 24. And material is added during the process. If it is during the process, I'll use 100 minus given here for opening. Go back to the question. If you will read the question, he told you there that opening working process is completed 60% with respect to material. Beginning working process. Is 60 percent completed with respect to materials and 20 percent completed with respect to conversion. I'm just telling you. Okay, so for material, it was how much completed? 60. I take 100 minus 60 remaining will be 40. So 16,000 times 40 percent will give you 6,000. Then conversion cost 100 minus given is how much? 20. So remaining will be 80. So 16,000 multiplied by 80 percent will give you how much? 12,800. Done. Done guys. Then started and completed. For them personal completion will always be 100, 100. So I'll take this times this. It will give you 76,000. Units times personal completion will give you 76,000. For closing, we'll use always which percentage? Given, given. And if these are given for closing working process. Go back to the question. For closing working process, this is the closing. Ending inventory was 90% complete for material. Given is 90. 40% complete for conversion. Given is 40. We'll take here 90 and 40. We'll multiply. 24,000 times 90% will give you 21,600. 24,000 times 40 percent will give you 9,600. Understood? Now we will add, that's it. We'll add and we'll get the equivalent units. Equivalent units, 6,400. This for material. Plus 76 plus this. How much total? 100,400. Ah, okay. 104,000. Yes. Understood? And for conversion cost, this value plus this value plus this value. It is 98,400. Understood? Now step two, you will move. Which method you are applying? Right for method. So only focus is on current year cost. Don't take last year's. 
current year and current year cost is given here let me show you because i will not come back this is current year data this is current year data this is current year data for material current year cost is this is for material for lab this is conversion cost from here till here this is what because conversion cost include labor cost and overhead cost understood so i'm taking you to the second step so first of all i want to calculate cost per equivalent units for what material i'll take current year material cost divided by eup of material current year material cost is 468000 given in the question eup of material 104000 just we calculated in step number 1 so material cost per unit is how much 4.5 per unit understood then what we have for conversion cost conversion cost include labor and overhead i need labor cost and overhead cost per current period okay which is labor cost is how much 182 880 plus overhead cost is how much 391 160 this will give you conversion cost divided by eup it is how much 98400 per conversion cost you will get cost per unit how much 5.83 got it now you will calculate don't forget values per material value is 4.5 for conversion cost value is 5.3 Please, I'll go back to step number one because I want to calculate the cost of closing work in process. Or this is the material. I'll take this value, closing work in process. Multiply by what it was four point four point five. I'll multiply the four point five. It will give you material cost how much? Ninety seven two hundred. And for conversion cost, I'll take these units. What was the cost? Five point. Eight three. Can you multiply? Sorry. Nine sixty. Six eight. Ah. Huh? If I will add these two, this will give me total cost. Right or wrong? If you will add these two, so it will give you this much value. It's all there. This is material cost. This is conversion cost. This will become your total cost. This is your answer. Understood. Now, <clears throat> last point I want to tell you: they will not ask calculation from you in CMA for spoilage, normal spoilage, but theoretically they will ask you. As you know, do you remember we have we studied spoilage in job order costing also? We have a two type of spoilage: normal and abnormal. Normal spoilage will always be the part of cost of goods sold means a product cost. It will stay in the work in process account, but abnormal spoilage will always be your period cost. It will be recorded as a loss separately, right or wrong? But the point here you are thinking how you will calculate it. This is maybe your point, guys. Please remember here. Please, at the end of practically, practically, I'm telling you, at the end of each department, for example, finishing department or assembling department. At the end of each department, inspection will be there, and they will find out those units which which do not meet the quality standards. It means those are spoilage. Understood? That could be normal or abnormal. Understood? If it is from there, you will take those number of units and you will multiply. You will multiply. You will take those number of units of which spoilage. For example, abnormal. If it is abnormal spoilage. We we'll take number of units of abnormal spoilage multiplied by what department's equivalent unit? Equivalent unit cost. I told you right. How to get equivalent unit cost? Material conversion. You can add both and multiply with what? What I'm saying. For example, first identify how much abnormal units are there. Then multiply with what? Department's equivalent unit cost because every department can calculate equivalent cost. By using FICO or by using weighted average, they can you can apply department wise also. So they will tell you, for example, in department we have a material equivalent cost five dollar, conversion cost equivalent cost six dollars. Total will become what? Total will become how much? Eleven. 
I can multiply with what number of units of abnormal spoilage, I will get the value of abnormal spoilage. So please go through this. First, I told you normal spoilage is product cost, abnormal spoilage is the separate loss. Remember this point. Then I told you recognize recognizing the loss resulting from abnormal spoilage under process costing is our multi-step process. What is multi-step? I told you the manufacturer established inspection points. That is placed in the production process where those goods not meeting the specification are pulled from the process. Obviously, you will separate those products. This is a this is in contrast to job order costing. There we don't do inspection, etc. I'm just assuming. Okay. So what we'll do here in because in job order costing, not inspection, job order costing. Okay, we can find out spoilage at any point, but in Process costing spoilage should be find out at the end of each process how much spoilage we have. This is the difference. And I told you how to get it. You will take one number of units of abnormal spoilage multiplied by department cost. Normal spoilage, you don't need to do anything with normal because it is product cost, it is already there. You don't need to do it. The normal spoilage which you want to record separately as loss, that you need to calculate. Now you will calculate number of units of abnormal spoilage. Multiply by departments equivalent unit cost. Okay, this will give you. And these values, if they will ask calculation, he will tell you number of units also. And equivalent unit cost also, you can multiply. Understood, guys? So this was our process costing. If you have any question, you can ask me, guys.